there is this specific Danish coffee table that I saw on Pinterest like a year ago and I've been wanting to make one ever since. It is a pink tiled coffee table. It's just so cute. Very millennial pink glossier store Instagram advertisement vibe. I had so many different ideas on how to make it. At first I was thinking, well, I could get peel and stick tile backsplash that they sell at Home Depot or at Amazon, where it's basically just like a sticker of fake tile made for a kitchen or something. The goal was always actual tile, but porcelain tile can be like $50 a square foot and I need at least six square feet for the table. So I kind of resigned myself to not doing this project until I found someone on Facebook Marketplace and they listed that they were selling tile and the color was just listed as multicolor and both photos just looked kind of grayish and I couldn't even tell what size the tile was. They didn't list the dimensions, they didn't list how much, they just listed that there was a box of it. <laughs> And they told me it was light purple and light grayish blue. And I was like, hmm, that could be cute. I Venmoed her and had my dad drive me to pick them up. And she left them in a box for me on her porch. And I was shook at how much there was. There were two heavy boxes. And the light purple definitely had way more tile, but there was still a good amount of the light blue one. And I've been playing with the dimensions of them and organizing them and laying them out. And I have enough of the lilac tile to make the coffee table. I think I'm gonna make mine a bit less wide. How do I phrase this? My brain is, I'm gonna make mine not as long and narrow, but like shorter and wider. So it's more like a classic coffee table shape. I don't have enough to do the exact replica of the original, but it's gonna be 21 feet high, 21 feet wide, and not feet, oh my God. <laughs> it's gonna be fucking heavy. I'm like really nervous for that actually because I live on a third floor apartment. I went on the Icon website. I'm not even gonna try to say that whole word. <laughs> I can't even remember it. But I went on their website and it said it weighed 40 kilograms, which is like almost 80 pounds, I think. So this is a piece of furniture, but it's going to be so beautiful. I'm so excited. I can't stop thinking about it. And yeah, we're about to go to Home Depot. I get 13 eight foot two by fours. Side note, I didn't know that two by fours weren't actually two inches by four inches. Comment below if you think that's the dumbest shit you've ever heard. Like what? Gonna wear my mask, practice social distancing, etc. at Home Depot. Hopefully they have everything I need, they should. Yeah? Well, we don't know how you want to... It's art, keep walking. Okay. I broke a nail. We're back from Home Depot. Did some damage. And now my job is to clean out the carport so that there's enough room to actually build this table. Now I'm just gonna listen to Lana Del Rey and clean. I also graduated college today, so I'm in a very good mood. Just vibing. It's warm out. Vibing, vibing, vibing. Okay. Also, just to be like a YouTuber and insert a clip of me editing, I wanted to mention that I lost access to all of my Adobe Creative Cloud apps <laughs> because I graduated and I'm not gonna pay $30 a month. So I actually bought Final Cut a while ago. So I'm learning to edit on that. So let me know if the editing you can tell I have a degree in editing because I like kind of do. 13 eight foot two by fours. Item three 24 inch bench presses. Scrubbing sponge. Microfiber grout cleaning cloth, which is probably the same as any other microfiber cloth, but it was right there, so. Felt pads to use on the feet. A little grout squeegee. 
this gun thing for these wood glues. Pre-mixed adhesive and grout. Oh shit, that's everything. I based my measurements off the fact that I'm working with three inch tiles. The original table uses two inch tiles, so you might have to tweak the measurements depending on the size that you're using. The last piece, Woo! thank you. So for the actual building process, I followed a tutorial from DIYCandy.com. Highly recommend, I'll put the link down below. I calculated my own measurements based off my tile. I basically alternated between long and short pieces to create a lattice joint and then glued it together with wood glue. So I believe what I'm gonna do is lay these pieces down, glue them together one by one in an interlocking fashion and clamp them as I do it. Let's hope this five below $5 tripod pulls through. So the gluing process was kind of difficult. I made some mistakes. Firstly, I didn't spread out the glue at first. I recommend using a thinner layer of glue than I did because honestly, I just used way too much and wasted it. Also, I didn't really pay enough attention to measurements and making the measurements perfect as well as paying attention to the angles. I really should have been making sure everything was a right angle and especially making sure that the lengths of wood matched up at the ends of the feet because that's what really got me. The table update is that this is taking so long and actually kind of like a lot of muscle strength. It's just a pain in the ass basically, but hopefully it's gonna be worth it. And I'm realizing more and more how heavy this table is gonna be. Like I knew it was gonna be at least 80 pounds, but I didn't re realize what 80 pounds felt like. It's gonna take at least two people to carry, that's for sure. And as you can see, since I did not sand the boards, we just cut them. They're not lining up quite perfectly. So what we're gonna do is just like saw it. So it's gonna be like a quarter of an inch shorter than I anticipated, but that's fine. That's not even like noticeable. The table has been setting overnight. The only problem is it was below freezing last night. Go climb it. Woo. Um, and I'm going outside in shorts and a t-shirt to check on its progress. So I'm gonna take you guys with me. So Okay, my baby. Okay, well, I need my dad to saw off the legs. Flipped it over. It's quite heavy. <laughs> I think I bruised my leg already trying to flip it over. So now we need to make it even. So that's the next step. Well, because that's a corner. That's why I turned it that way. Okay. To make my cut easier. Should we like jigsaw the rest off? Well, obviously, yeah, we're gonna get this. Proof of how cold it got overnight. We just don't have the right tools to make everything perfectly even, so we kind of have to go like piecemeal. If you have the tools to make it perfectly even, then go ahead and you won't have to do this step. Yep. So we're measuring the four outer feet to see which one is the shortest. And then we're going to see if cutting the entire thing to that shortest length will work. Basically, one end of the table is higher than the other. So the way we're going to remedy it, that is basically cutting a line down from that, which we're going to measure. <laughs> what is this thing? Does it like put chalk down? Yep. That's what it's called, a chalk line. That's cool. <laughs> Wild. Right now I'm working on sanding the bottoms of the table so that it will lay flat. We just cut them, but it was impossible with our equipment to cut it completely straight. So now I'm trying to sand out the parts that are too long, but it's just so hard. It's so cold. Very cold. As I've said, you're sick of it. And I'm very, very tired. This baby could hold a lot of weight. So I am done sanding, at least sanding the legs. It's not really wobbling like it was before, meaning I've sanded it down 
pretty much flat. And remember, we're gonna put furniture pads on the base. So if there's like a tiny, tiny margin of error, it's fine because we're gonna use a felt pad on the base. Sand it over with some of the really knotty parts that were sticking out. But overall, I am ready to glue the tiles to the top. So I've laid out the tiles on the tabletop just to make sure that the measurements worked. And thank God they did. I'm looking for item. Here's item. Wear a coat. Here's the tile adhered so far. I did two of the sides too, but I'm out of the adhesive already. But honestly, like, this looks so pretty. I feel like the color is not doing it justice in this photo. Oh my God, it's gonna be so pretty, I can't wait. Day four. So I'm gonna finish adhering the tile and then probably shouldn't, but I do wanna grout today. It's like you're not supposed to grout the same day, but I'm really impatient, so. I got a smaller item and more adhesive. So hopefully this process is easier. And I'm gonna wear gloves this time, which will probably be very helpful. Okay, so I'm still not done gluing. I need more adhesive because it just takes so fucking much. I'm fine. Glued on this side and then the legs and sides. <sighs> it's just like so annoying. So now I'm gonna wipe off the excess grout so it doesn't stain it. I think using the adhesive grout combo mixture was a mistake. A big mistake <laughs> because I'm using so much of it and I feel like maybe if I would have bought adhesive and grout separately I wouldn't have had to use so much. This project is sucking the life out of me. Like Pinterest is rotting the brains of the youth. I'm making an experimental decision based off of reading construction forums to use liquid nails instead of buying more adhesive because the tile adhesive is so expensive. <sighs> I don't know, basically it's just cheaper. Like I, I don't wanna spend another $30 on freaking glue, so. Experimental phase incoming for the rest of the gluing process. We're using this. It's not what a carpenter would recommend, but it's what a broco would recommend. So let's see if it works. The glue worked. This side was pretty uneven, but hopefully with the grout, it looks good. So I'm gonna wait for it to set a bit more than start grouting. Took a Duncan trip and now I'm ready to grout. So I did like half of it and now using this sponge, I think basically the idea is you wanna get it off the tile part, but keep it in the lines, you know? needs to be a bit more wet though. See, she's looking pretty good, right? Let's get a good light shot. Look at that reflectiveness, baby. I did the inner legs though. I couldn't fit a sixth tile. So I'm just gonna have a layer of grout then smooth it out. And that's all for today. So, <laughs> I sent my dad to the hardware store. Because we need like a thin piece of board because the tile is going out further than the wood. So we need to offset that. Grouted the wood part which is not gonna be visible, but um, I'm gonna smooth it out a bit more, but I think it's nice. I think it adds more cohesiveness to the table. Extra bonus step, if you, for whatever reason, measured or grouted incorrectly, is adding a little buffer to the feet. We cut two eighth inch thick planks for each side, and these are gonna be glued there. I'm basically just gonna do a bit of grout to try to cover that up and then put the felt pad on there. Gonna wood glue these together the same way I did with the table itself, good memories. Okay, so I cut these more or less to shape and they're just feeling sick, so I'm gonna stick them on. It's all done, look at it in the light. 
and we're gonna try to lift it up. One, two, three. Okay, that's not that bad, right? Uh, yeah. It's actually really hard to carry. Final notes, you should probably use grout sealant on this, which I have not done yet. I might, but I just wanted to post the tutorial because I'm sick of editing it, honestly. Uh, but yeah, here's a cute, sexy montage of my table with strategically placed items to make it look aesthetic. Be a man. If you're asking for a perfect woman, don't see. Be a man. Be a man. Be a man.